All right, I've had some requests to talk about Coulomb's law, and I can't say no to your pretty faces. So here we go. The force between any two particles that have charge to them can be calculated using this formula. Q1 and Q2 are the charges on the two particles in Coulombs. Now, a Coulomb is just a way you can measure charge, and we have an amount in coulombs for electrons, protons, things like that. Now notice if either of these is zero, i.e. if one of these is neutral, there's no attraction at all because k times q1 times zero is zero. And I don't care what r is, it's still going to be zero overall. So you need a charge on either are on both of the particles for Coulomb's law to actually apply. K is just a constant, the same way there are constants in everything, in uh, I don't know math, chemistry, all that stuff. It's 9 times 10 to the power of 9, and the units are Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Now, there is a reason why these units are the way that they are, but that's beyond the scope of, well, probably that you care. Long story short, it just makes sure that everything cancels out properly. Same, re same reason R, the gas constant, is like liters, atmospheres per mole Kelvin or whatever. And R is the distance between the two particles, and it has to be in meters if you're going to use 9 times 10 to the power of 9. See, those meters squared are going to cancel with this meter squared. Note that the R here is squared. So, let's try one of these and we'll see what happens. I want to know the force between an electron and a proton if they're one meter apart. So you got your little electron, you got your proton. They're opposite charges, so they're attracted to each other. But how much are they attracted to each other? What force of attraction do they feel is the question. Well, lucky for us, we have a formula. The force between the two is K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. Now, K is 9 times 10 to the power of 9 Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Again, those units just make sure everything cancels out properly. The charge on an electron, this is going to be Q1, is 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 Coulombs. The charge on, well, actually, it's a negative charge. I should have mentioned that. And the charge on a proton is positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulombs. If you have a cluster of five protons, like uh, what atom would that be? A boron nucleus? Then you would have to multiply this by five to get the total amount of charge. Each proton is bringing this amount of coulombs with it, okay? And then I need over my distance squared, which is just one meter. And again, it has to be in meters. All right, let's see what we can do here. So, 9 times 10 to the power of 9 times 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 times 1.6 times 10 to the power of, ah, oh crap, did I type positive or negative 19? I typed negative, okay, good. Divided by one squared. All right, so the force that they feel, and I forgot a negative on this sign, so I'm just gonna add it here, is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 28 newtons. That is such a piddly small amount, they probably don't even feel attracted to each other at all. But what I would like to point out is that we're going to bring them closer. We're going to bring them so that they're only one micrometer apart or a micrometer apart. Let's do this again. We've got k, q1, q2 over r squared. Can you tell me what k is? That's right. It's 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. 
The charge on my electron is still negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The charge on my proton is still positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And the only thing that's changed is my distance. I am now 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters apart. 10 to the negative 6 is the factor that micro means. Anyways, calculator time. Nine times 10 to the 9 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. I'm not going to bother with the negative here again. Times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And then divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 6 squared. So my answer is... 2 point, oh, negative 2.3 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons. Ah, I brought them closer, and the force of attraction between the two has increased. It may not look like it's increased, but it totally has. One thing I'd like to point out is that the way that I've done this formula, a negative answer means that the particles attract each other. A positive answer, well, that's not a positive answer, but if it was positive, it would mean they repel each other. Your teacher may ask you to put a negative in front of here so that it's backwards. I personally don't care. I ignore negatives, and then I just tell myself, okay, that's negative, that's positive, so they attract. And I don't bother with the negatives, as you could probably clearly see. So, let's summarize. The force of attraction between two particles is based on this constant. It's based on the charges, and it's based on the distance between them. If there's no charge on either of the particles, then there's no force of attraction or repulsion. The bigger these charges, clearly the bigger the force. And the smaller the distance, the bigger the force as well. That shouldn't be surprising. You're by decreasing the distance between the two, you are uh, decreasing the denominator of this fraction, which should make the result go up. Who's the boss? We're all bosses. Best of luck to you.